Joining us now with more on this, Nevada Congressman Steve Horsford, a Democrat and chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. What did you make? I mean, uh, uh, first, the uh, congressman from Arizona making that remark on the House floor during this uh, debate over the defense authorization bill, appropriation bill, and then his apology afterwards. Um, what did you make of all of that? What, what's going on? Well, Jim, thank you for having me on. I'm here in Orlando, Florida at a Democracy for the People event, uh, talking to constituents with the Congressional Black Caucus Institute about the issues that matter from voting rights uh, to the courts, to our schools. Uh, but what that um, member did, Representative Crane from Arizona, was unbecoming, it was unprofessional, it was insensitive. The, the word itself has vestiges of racism uh, for that word to be used on the House floor in 2023 uh, is unconscionable. Uh, while he may have publicly acknowledged uh, the, the, his error, he still has not uh, personally apologized to the member, uh, Representative Joyce Beatty, that it was directed towards, uh, or the body. And look, Representative Crane and people like Senator Tuberville have, in, have proven time and time again why the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion training is actually needed in this moment. As Secretary Lloyd Austin said of the Department of Defense, uh, our diversity is our strength. We have over 40% of our service members who are individuals of color. And so to have this resource um, within the Pentagon is something that is important to our service members. Um, and it's important to our national security uh, and it's unfortunate that the extreme faction of the Republican con Congress chose to use this as a wedge issue uh, against our military. And, I mean, do you accept the congressman's apology? Well, he hasn't given that apology directly to the body or to the member that it was hmm. targeted to. But the larger point is it's not about any one individual. It's about the vestiges of why they are using woke as a wedge issue. Look, if, if, you, if you're against uh, people of color being in the military, just say it. If you're against us uh, having representation in the private sector, just say it. But it's time out uh, for using these issues to divide us rather than to bring us together as a nation. Well, and you mentioned uh, Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama and, and what he was saying earlier on in the week when he was defending the use of the term white nationalism. And I was talking to one of your Democratic colleagues uh, in the previous hour, and I was asking her, and I'll ask you the same question, whether or not uh, these, these two episodes highlight something that perhaps the American people aren't aware of, that there are these kinds of attitudes floating around up on Capitol Hill more so than we realize. W what's your sense of that? Senator Tuberville is using a Jim Crow era tradition of the Senate, which is a blue slip, to, to uphold the confirmation of hundreds, hundreds of military nominees who are essential to our national security. These are highly qualified people. These are people who should be in their position. It's the first time in 164 years that the Marine Corps has not had a commandant confirmed by the Senate. We currently have an acting person in that role. Um, unfortunately, this is why the Congressional Black Caucus had to call on Chairman Durbin to reform the blue slip process, not only for the military, but for federal judges uh, and other important positions, because it's, uh, it's, it's past time, it's long past time for these types of traditions which have a history in segregation and Jim Crow to still be used in the United States Senate in 2023. We've called for that to be to end or to be drastically reformed. Um, and, and we're hoping that Chairman Durbin will take us up uh, on that, that request. And, and this defense bill has been described as dead on arrival in the Senate, but it goes to the Senate where Democrats are expected to strip out these hot button issues that were attached to it. It still has to go back to the House. And I guess I'm, I'm curious if some of those provisions somehow are left in the legislation coming out of the Senate, coming back to the House, 
Is there any chance that you would vote for that? Other Demo you think the vast majority of Democrats would have any hope of, of supporting that piece of legislation? Or might we end up in a situation where this defense spending bill is really just held up for months on end because of these kinds of attachments, these kinds of amendments that have been added to it? Yeah, not only are they trying to defund diversity, equity, and inclusion, but they're denying service members access to reproductive justice. Service members who do not have a choice in where they're deployed. And if they happen to be deployed to a state like Florida, where I am at today with Representative Maxwell, or Texas, where they're now trying to take these rights away, those service members don't have a choice. So yes, the Senate does have to act to correct these most extreme provisions that now have been advanced. It's unfortunate that Speaker McCarthy allowed the far right faction to take over this bill. This is the first time, Jim, that I've not been able to vote for the National Defense Authorization Act. I have four military installations in my district in Nevada. I support providing uh, funding to our military and uh, their ability to have the resources and the tools but not when it includes these wedge issues that are against people's fundamental right to health care, reproductive justice, or that um, defund and erode diversity and equity, which is a strength within our military, not a weakness. And I want to get your thoughts on some new reporting that we have over here at CNN that secretaries of state in Pennsylvania and New Mexico have testified uh, to that special counsel grand jury investigating uh, Trump's uh, actions after the 2020 election. What did you make of that? I know Nevada was another state that had the um, issue of uh, fraudulent electors, uh, phony electors being advanced to try to overturn the election results. That was something that you encountered in your state. Um, I, I guess, what, what is your sense of how this, this investigation is proceeding over there at the Justice Department? Well, I want to commend uh, the attorney general and the special prosecutor for doing their job. But this is why we're here in Orlando having a forum with constituents to talk about the attacks on democracy. This is not only about the former president and those who were involved in uh, overturning a duly elected election or to deny the voters the results of that election by, over, by, by, by not upholding the electoral uh, process. Uh, you know, I was there on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol. It was not just an attack on our building. It was an attack on the foundations of our democracy, which are our schools, it's the courts, and it's the most important and most fundamental right, which is our right to vote. That's why the Congressional Black Caucus, our members, are working to... Uh, passed the voting uh, John R. Lewis Voting Rights Enhancement Act. It's the first time in 40 years that Republicans have not worked with us to reauthorize that. These are the cornerstones of our democracy. We'll be talking to constituents here later about what they have, uh, their role and their power in ensuring that we continue to uphold our democracy at a time that it's under attack, not just the last election, yeah. but the elections to come. All right, Congressman Steve Horsford, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jim, for having me All on. All right.